Bible study together. We're in John. We're going to start chapter 5 today. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, just finished chapter 4 uh, on Friday, and we're going to pick it up at uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Let's just start reading and uh, see where it takes us today, okay? Hope you have your Bibles out. Open up, sit down, relax. Let's, uh, let's talk about Jesus. See what he has for us, okay? Chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So Jesus attended a, a Jewish feast in Jerusalem. The feast isn't named, but it was probably one of the three uh, feasts of obligation. Um, that would be the Passover, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, or Pentecost. These were called feasts of obligations because every male Jew who lived within 20 miles of Jerusalem was required by Jewish law to attend them. It's significant that Jesus was seen attending the feast it, because it gave him an opportunity to, to reach out and reveal himself and, and to share with and to share what the Father wanted him to share and, and reveal those things to a large number of people. Most of the people who attended the feast would, would be God-fearing people and they would have their minds upon God. That's why they were there. So they would be prepared for the gospel, all right? It gave him an opportunity to teach people to be, to be faithful, to worship God. Um, the Son of God himself was faithful, and so he was there as an example also. If Jesus himself, the Son of God, was faithful in surrendering to the Father and honoring him, how much more should we be faithful in our our worship to God. Let's pick it up in John 2. I mean, verse 2 of chapter 5, read, about, read down to about verse 4, okay? Now, there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease they had. Now, these, the diseased and the ill, picture those, I think, in, in the world today that are just gripped by desperate need. And and uh, it, it was, this area was where the animals were kept. There, there was a pool there to provide water, um, for the animals to drink and and five porches around to to provide a to to provide a resting area for the comfort of the people, the pool was a uh, around the pool was a great multitude of sick pe sick people, um, and they were the focus of attention in this story. Notice their need, which is a I think a picture of all the world who, who live in desperate need. All who are blind or lame and withered spiritually, man. There were the blind who could not see. And just take this spiritually, too. There were the lame who could not walk. There were the withered who were deformed or paralyzed. There were so many who were poor and and, and beggarly. And, and the world, there are so many verses. I, I looked up a bunch of verses that they just share out that kind of hurt and pain. Um, it says in uh, Job 10.1, my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. David had so many things. You see where, you know, you felt some of these things. Psalm 3110, for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of, of my iniquity and my bones are consumed. Psalm 42, 6. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Psalm 69, 2. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. Psalm 73, 2. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had, had well near slipped. Psalm 73, 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. 
And I think some of us feel those things at times. Maybe even now you're going through stuff. You know, notice their desperate hope and, and, and faith. Now, either the scripture, I, I'm not sure about this, either the description given in scripture is to be taken literally or else men of that day gave their explanation as to what caused the pool to be troubled. If this account is man's description of what happened at the pool, then there was apparently a subterranean pocket of energy, either air or a stream underneath the pool that caused the pool to occasionally bubble up. Um, it could have been God, I have no idea. The people of that day grasping for something to help them in their daily lives said that a um, supernatural occurrence was happening when the water bubbled. An angel was thought to be swaying around in the water and the first person to move into the water after the bubbling was, was believed to be healed. You know, I, I can understand that. People are always grasping for something to help them in their daily lives. It may be some supernatural or destined power in a pool of water or in the astrology of stars above or in some magical person on earth. People never change, regardless of the generation. In, in their grasp for help in, in life, people continue to, to seek everywhere except Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself. They hope and put their, their hope in everything except him. Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Pick it up, verse five, okay? Go down through verse nine. Now a certain man was, was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that situation and that condition a long time, he said to him, do what you, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him and, and, and said, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps in before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. What a picture of Jesus, who has the power to meet the needs of every desperate person in the world. This man was either paralyzed or, or lame. He'd been that way for 38 long years, day after day after day, for 38 years. And Jesus' compassion was, was heartwarming, touching and and revealing, demonstrating how, how he wants to reach out to each and every person. And he saw the man lying there and knew all about his desperate condition. Look at this, it was, it was Jesus who initiated the relationship. He approached the man and, and reached out to him. You know, Jesus sees in every, every person's needs. He reaches out to everybody in compassion, offering help. He, he reaches out. Maybe through the message of the word, you hear Bible teaching or somebody hears a Bible teaching or and, and the word brings an answer. Maybe it's a witness of a family or friend that's talking about the things of God. Maybe it's the beauty of nature that reveals God to somebody. Uh, the thoughts about God that penetrate every man's mind, they, they just come, the thoughts come. It says in Romans 8.35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Everything in our lives has been filtered through his love. Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Two different words for care. Second care means he has a plan, he has a purpose. This man was all alone in this world. He had no family or friends who could help him. 
This is really significant. The man didn't know he was healed until he, he obeyed the command of the Lord. Jesus didn't pronounce a word of healing, you're healed. He merely commanded the man to stand up. <laughs> the man to act. In the act, the man was to show his faith. If he believed, he would arise and walk. If he didn't believe, he, he would simply lie there, continuing on, on just as he had always done. Hey, listen, no person has to continue on and on through life just as they've always been. Hear this. Enslaved to the sin and corruption and desperate needs of this world, every person can experience the healing power of Jesus Christ, the power to change their lives and to make them a, into a new person. All he has to do is one simple thing. That person has believed the word of Jesus Christ just believe it enough to obey, doing exactly what Jesus said. It's a clear fact. If we believe him, if we obey him, if we do not believe him, we do not obey him. To be made whole and changed into a new person, a new person who is freed from the sin and desperate needs of this corruptible world, we have to believe him enough to obey him. Luke one thirty seven. for with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Luke 17, 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Hebrews 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. James two seventeen. Even so faith if it has not works, is dead, being alone. So we have to obey. Now, we have a problem in this story that Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath. <laughs> By healing the man on the Sabbath, he was breaking the Jewish ceremonial law. He was committing a very serious sin, violating a, a ritual and, and rule of religion. And the rest of this man's story centers upon this fact about the Sabbath. Uh, we'll go back, we'll pick it up at verse 10, okay? The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath. <laughs> it's not lawful you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then he asked him, who, then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? That's such a picture of just dead religion, trying to meet the world's desperate needs just by religion. Religion, just dead religion is, is a, a religion of legalism. The religious leaders were trying to meet the needs of people through rules and regulations, ceremonies and rituals and all that kind of stuff. They were more concerned with the man who was violating the ritual of the Sabbath than the man who was suffering in a painful condition for 38 years. They should have known that the power of God had healed the man. They should have been eager to share with this man Jesus, the man upon whom, upon whom such power rested. They should have been involved with him but they cared little about the power of God. They cared little about his messenger. They cared only about the status quo should be maintained, that their religious practices continue as they were, just as they were, and, and, and not to be violated in any way. Their thoughts were upon their own, their own position and security in their religion. Look at their question. It was not, who is the man who has healed and helped you so much? No, but it was, who was the man that broke the religious law? They didn't see the good that had been done. They saw only that their position and security were threatened. That someone had more power and more influence doing more good than they were. And you look at that and you just kind of question what are we concerned about? Are we concerned about the 
the needs of those around us? Or are we more concerned about our life just being status quo and going through our religious ceremonies? And we all have them, no matter what our churches are. You know, we think we, 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 we brag on we don't have all these rituals, but every one of us who's been around a while, we have rituals and we may not call them that, but we do the same things over and over and it's just the way we do our thing. And if that's violated or broken or doesn't work that way, we, we uh, don't think it's right, you know, and they don't do it our way. You know? And what a, what a shame. We just need to let God do what he wants to do wherever he wants to do it. We, we need to let, trust God to, to, to meet needs and, and just be available in any way that he wants to do that. And he wants to meet the needs of those around us. And maybe it's a word from us. Maybe it's a, a verse from us, of, from the Bible. Maybe it's a, a prayer. Um, maybe it's just every day praying for the lost, praying for the needy, the hurting, those who are spiritually bankrupt, those who don't have the, any answer to life. And there's so many struggling right now just over things that are happening just in our culture and in our world and, and uh, in our decisions we've made recently. And, you know, we just need to say, Jesus... I want to be about your business. I just want to be used by you. And Lord, I'm going to pray that this day you can use me. You can guide me. You can show me. You can direct me. Direct me to that person or those people that have been struggling for 38 plus years. Maybe it's, maybe it's a physical disease. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a spiritual disease, which is much worse. Not knowing Jesus. Not knowing their future, not knowing that there's hope, not knowing that they're related to a God that cares about them, that everything in their life has been has been designed and God is going to use everything in their life. He hasn't caused it all, but he's going to use it all to meet their needs and to reveal himself to them. So that's, that's what I got out of this story that, you know, uh, Pula Bethesda was not very far from the temple. And it was just... You know, and just um, <laughs> people going to the temple would walk by there every day. Religious leaders would walk by there every day and no, probably didn't even notice these people anymore. But Jesus showed up and he did a work, revealed himself to this individual. And let him do that in your life if you don't know him. Let him do that through your life if you know him to those around you. Because that's our purpose for being here, is to make his life known to the world around us. Father, as we just take a moment to let this word that we've read today and talked about, Lord, maybe some listening right, right now feel like maybe Job that we read and, and some of the Psalms where David was in total despair and couldn't even hardly move. And, and Lord, and we see in the next Psalm, how he's rejoicing and praising you because you're there and you've revealed yourself, Lord. And I pray that there would be some even, even involved in this prayer right now who are believers and are just so caught up and so in such bondage right now because their lives are a mess or things in their lives are messed up or they don't know what their next step is. Would you let them just let all of that go? Teach them how to just let all of that go and trust you and say, Jesus, I'm putty in your hands. I want you to take me, Lord. I, I just redo me, man. Uh, just, I'm, you're the potter, I'm the clay. And Lord, just make me into what you want me to be, whatever that is. I surrender. That's all you ask for any of us, just to surrender and to be obedient to what your word calls us to do, Lord. How we love you, how we exalt you, how we, we choose to surrender to you today. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, my friends. See you tomorrow.